It's my pleasure to announce our first speaker, to introduce our first speaker, Professor Miguel Narata from the University of Torino. And he will speak about the wave kinetic approach to anomalous conduction in the FPUT chain. Miguel, over to you. Okay, thanks. And uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer, Gennady. Thanks, and uh, all your other organizers for uh, organizing this nice uh, event. So um, I will talk about uh, wave kinetic uh, approach. So I will use uh, the so-called wave kinetic equation, uh, and I will show uh, some numerics about it uh, to approach the problem of anomalous conduction. Anomalous conduction is a, is a problem that uh, we encounter in, uh, in, uh, in physics, in statistical mechanics. And uh, I will do that on a, on a, a, um, on a, sy a system which is the FPUT system chain, which is the Fermi Pasta single system. So, uh, just uh, what I'm going to say is uh, it's collected in two papers. One is uh, published in 2020, and uh, the authors are Giovanni De Matteis, uh, uh, who is in Ross Leonard Polytechnic Institute in New York, Lamberto Rondoni. Uh, Politecnico di Torino, Davide Proman, who is also here from Norwich, East Anglia, and uh, Francesco De Vita, who is uh, Politecnico di Bari. And then the other paper, we have other two. So Mazzilli, who is now doing a PhD in, uh, in Germany, and Yuri Volt from Raslin or Polytechnic Institute. Okay, so, um, okay, let me go through, uh, through the, okay, some of you may have already uh, heard this talk, okay, but um, at least a part of this talk, but at, at the end you, you will see that I have some, something with respect to other presentation that I gave, I have some other uh, results that are, I think, are interesting, and uh, in any case, like uh, uh, in Latin would say, repetita juvent, so it means that if you repeat things, uh, that helps, okay? So let me go on the outline of my presentation. So I will uh, give a, an introduction to the, the problem of uh, anomalous conduction. And then I will show some um, uh, deterministic simulations. So, so I will show some numerical simulations uh, of the beta FPU system in the presence of two thermostats. <laughs> so the, the problem of anomalous conduction is uh, basically the determination of the conductivity. And, um, and this usually the conductivity for, uh, the, I would say, normal systems is, is a property of the, of the medium. But in some cases, as we will see, the conductivity is, uh, becomes, a, proper, becomes a, a function of the, uh, of the size of the system. In the specific case, for example, if you take two thermostats and you put them far away with a distant cell, what happens is that the conductivity becomes a function of uh, of the distance, okay? So I will discuss that. And I, I will do show some numerical computation of beta FPUT system uh, in between two thermostats and compute, the, uh, compute the, the, the conductivity of the system. And uh, in, uh, uh, well, those, those kind of simulations have been done a lot in the past. So, I mean, there is, apart from the way we analyze the, the data, uh, there is nothing particularly new in that. Uh, in the sense that other people have obtained uh, already established the, the, the anomalous conductivity properties of the beta FPU system. Uh, but then I will introduce the wave kinetic approach. So I will use wave kinetic equation to discuss the same problem. So within a mesoscale uh, approach. Again, some work on this has already been done by a number of people, a theoretical uh, approach, but I will show uh, some numerical simulations, which I think will help us in understanding uh, what is really happen happening uh, when we are in presence of anomalous conduction. So again, numerical computation of wave kinetic equation, and then I will, I will give you some uh, conclusions, some concluding remarks. Okay, so just to give you uh, this is, I, I think that this uh, problem uh, of anomalous conduction can be, uh, I mean, inserted in a more general problem of physics and, uh, and statistical mechanics. And this is the, the reason why we're here in the sense that uh, if you think about, if you think of a crystal and you want to understand the, 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 the physics, okay, of that, you can, uh, 
at least for, for simple models like uh, the one that I'm using, you can, uh, at a micro scale, uh, you can use uh, a dynamic, the dynamical equations for Newton's law in order to, to follow the, the motion of the single uh, particles. Okay, so this is what is called uh, molecular dynamics uh, simulation, for example. But uh, on the other side, if you uh, look things in a macroscopic, at a macroscopic level, uh, we have uh, the Fourier law, which and here we have the energy, which is proportional to the uh, gradient of temperature. And, uh, uh, and this kappa E is, is the conductivity, is the thermal conductivity of the system. So if you apply conservation law, uh, this is in 1D, you get the diffusion uh, equation for, for temperature. And those things are, are well known. But one of the main problems of statistical mechanics is to uh, make, you know, a, a, the gap between, uh, to fill the gap between the, the Newton's law and the macro scale, uh, uh, and the Fourier law, so the macro scale uh, dynamics. So this is, I think, one of the reasons we're here is to, you know, to, to, we're concerned about statistical mechanics. So, and uh, we do that, I, at least in this work, I will, I will go from the micro scale to the macro scale using the weight kinetic approach. So the weight kinetic approach, uh, which has been introduced, well, the, First thing, this equation was written was by Parles, but then there has been some fundamental work by Klaus Hasselmann and, uh, and Vladimir Zakharov. In any case, if you, if you, uh, if you consider the, the, this diffusion equation, and if you assume that uh, kappa E is constant, okay, uh, you, get, you get, it's easy to find a stationary solution of the problem, and you get that the temperature is becomes a function, a linear function of uh, uh, space. Okay, let's suppose that you have a two thermostat. This is the problem we're solving. So you have two thermostat. You have the Fourier, uh, the diffusion equation. And this is well known that you get uh, linear uh, behavior of the temperature with coefficients a and b, which are a function of the temperature of the two thermostats. Uh, if Okay, so if the current and the temperature of the thermostats are known, then, and this is what usually we can measure from a numerical simulation, okay, let's suppose that we have two thermostats, we know the temperature, we do the computation, uh, and then we measure the, the current J, okay, let's suppose that we measure the current J, we can use as an operative, uh, um, say, definition of the conductivity, and this is what I'm going to use through my, my paper, uh, this definition, in which the conductivity is given by the energy a flux, the current, times L, which is the distance between the, um, the two uh, thermostats, and delta T, which is the temperature, the difference of temperature between the two thermostats. Okay, so uh, it's clear from here that uh, uh, in order to have a normal conduction, so kappa E should not be a function of uh, the scale of the size of the system, then J times L should be a constant. So J should scale like one over L, right? So in this case, kappa E is a constant, and then uh, this is, uh, we get a normal conduction. But what happened in the presence if you, if you have uh, anomalous conduction? Okay, this is just to tell you there is a very nice book by, by Lepre, uh, it's uh, uh, published in 2016, which is a collection of papers on anomalous conduction. And uh, uh, if, you, if you go through the paper, through the book, you know, you see that there are signature of anomalous conductivity. And, uh, and basically, uh, what happened is that, as I mentioned, that the conductivity may diverge in the limit of a large system size. So if you take large system size, L going to infinite, what happened is that kappa E could, can be a function of L to some power alpha, okay? What happens if alpha is equal to one? Well, alpha, alpha equal to zero, we know this is a constant, everything works. But if alpha is equal to one, this is what is known as ballistic conduction. What actually is happening is that if you have a thermostat, the, the waves travel, or the phonons travel from one thermostat to the other without interacting. It's like in this room having you know, uh, particles that move from one side to the other without uh, colliding with other particles, right? And this. Uh, what happens is that if you don't have any collision, uh, you will not get the system into a thermalized state. The same thing happens for uh, waves or phonons. So nonlinearity becomes important because uh, in order to, to have something which is more close to regular conduction, you need to have interactions, okay? 
if so this is what is called ballistic conduction okay but if uh if alpha is between zero and one then you have anomalous conduction so this is the first signature that we will look for uh on anomalous conduction the second one is uh energy perturbation may propagate the super diffusively which means that let's suppose that you have a energy uh which is constant over some space okay and let's make a perturbation of it uh, usually, when we do this perturbation, we, we make a perturbation which is a Gaussian, which is a bell-shaped uh, function. And then what we do, we look at how this function changes in time, okay, the growth of uh, the width, uh, the width of the, the Gaussian function, and we measure so this standard the variance of the, the, the Gaussian function. And then again, if beta is equal to one, then we have regular conduction, but beta greater than one, we have anomalous conduction. Also, when you have anomalous conduction, the temperature profiles uh, in non-equilibrium steady states are nonlinear, even for vanishing applied temperature gradients. Okay, so uh, for for normal, as I mentioned, for normal um, for normal uh, conduction, we, you have a linear temperature profile, but in between the two thermostat. But when you have a, anomalous conduction, you will see that the profiles are not are not linear; they have some strange behavior so just to give you again this is from lepre uh, uh, the book of lepre Th those are just examples in which uh, uh, this anomalous conduction has been uh, uh, observed and this is numerics numerical simulation this is the, the beta fpu problem and here well it's kind of small but you have conductivity as a function of the distance between two thermostats so the problem is that you have two thermostats with uh, the fpu system here and uh, if you measure conductivity in the way that I mentioned before, you get this uh, non-constants. I mean, you get that the kappa is the function of L with this power, which is 0 0.35, something like that. Uh, another example is when you have a hard point gas. So let's suppose that you have a one-dimensional hard point gas, okay? And uh, if you have one-dimensional hard point gas, well, you, you actually, in this case, you have the atomic uh, masses because so they don't have exactly the same mass because otherwise the system does not uh, I mean, it's, it's an integrable system, but in this case, what, if you have a perturbation of energy in, in the domain, then what happens is that um, you get uh, a central peak, okay, that if you use this is scale with some, this is a story that the labels are very small, this is scale with some, uh, some power, but what happens is that you have, uh, apart from the standard diffusion that you would expect, uh, you have also the formation of these waves that are traveling out of your uh, domain. So this is a super diffusive uh, phenomena. Those are experimental uh, uh, work. So this is uh, work with nanowires, so, so silicium germanium. So this is just a, a, a sketch, it's not a real picture of the experiment. So you see a small wire here, a hot thermostat, a cold thermostat. They measure somehow the thermal conductivity as a function of the length of the wire, and they observe some sort of ballistic uh, ballistic uh, conductivity, okay, behavior for small length, and then you get more or less a, a constant. So those are just examples of uh, uh, anomalous conductions that have been observed in numerics or in experiments. Okay, so again, uh, temperature profile. So in this, on on your left, you see here is. Uh, a, a linear system, so uh, so nonlinearity is set to zero, and you put a, a linear wave equation in between two thermostats at temperature t plus and t minus, and in uh, the first and the and the last masses uh, are are put in contact, yes, with a with a thermostat, and you see the profile that that is obtained is just very sharp, very sharp uh, temperature gradient here. Then the temperature becomes constant. And then again, another sharp uh, gradient of temperature here. And here, temperature is constant; is the average between the two temperature. So this is very different from what is happening in linear linear waves. Of course, are the, the dynamics is is ballistic, in the sense that there are no interactions. So uh, waves propagate from one side to the other without without any uh, changing. Without changing. This is uh, FPU system, and you see again that the profile is not linear as we expect, but there are some curves. And again, you see this uh, strong discontinuity uh, close to the close to the boundary. Okay. Here's this plot. Yeah. Okay. So uh, take a linear chain, 
okay? Linear chain. And then you put a thermostat, uh, the first, uh, something that moves, put ener kinetic energy at some, uh, the last or the first uh, mass. And at the last one, you put also some other kinetic energy. So they have a difference in temperature. This is only kinetic uh, temperature, right? So, uh, and then you measure uh, conductivity as, uh, well, no, you just measure profiles of, uh, you, you reach a stationary state. You measure the profile of the temperature. Actually, it's kinetic energy, and this is what uh, you obtain. So it's flat here. Is it clear? Uh, those different lines are just for different thermostats. So you can use different thermostats and you get different results. Okay? Okay, so let's go. Okay, this was kind of an introduction of, um, uh, of the problem, in, uh, of the conduction problem. And uh, let's now focus on, uh, on what we have done. So we have uh, uh, years of experience with uh, uh, the system of masses and, uh, and springs uh, non -linear, with non-linearity. So we have forces that are proportional to the displacement cube. So um, the system is known as fermi and beta fermi pastaulan system in which here is the Hamiltonian. So it's a kinetic energy plus uh, uh, potential energy. And this is the, the quartic uh, uh, potential, okay? So this is quartic potential. So we use this system, as I mentioned, some other people have used this, but as I will show you, we will analyze the data in a little bit uh, different way uh, with respect to what people have uh, have done in the past. And I will show you what we do. Okay, first thing, just, just trivial thing, uh, dispersion relation, okay? So if you write things, the linear dispersion relation is just uh, sine pi k over n, okay? So this is the linear linear ways. It, it, I mean, what I would like to, to tell you is that if you look at this, uh, the group velocity, so d omega over dk, which is the, uh, the velocity at which energy propagates, is a cosine wave, okay? So this means that the waves at, um, at low wave numbers travel faster than the waves at high wave numbers, okay? I would like to keep this in mind because this is something that will come out in our, in, uh, during my presentation. Okay, then we, we, we put two thermostats. And again, this is, has been done. So the thermostats are the following. So these are the equation of motion for the, for the chain. And we put an extra term here. And this term is, is called uh, Nose-Hoover uh, thermostat. And uh, what is it exactly? You, have, you see here that you have a, a Kronecker delta for the first mass and for the mass n, the last mass in the system. So you have to, the first and the last mass uh, have uh, an extra term, and this extra term, uh, what it, we, we shake it so there is a forcing to this first and last masses in such a way that uh, its kinetic temperature remain constant. So we, we define uh, a temperature T plus, which is the temperature of the one thermostat, and T minus, which is the temperature of the second thermostat. And whenever the kinetic energy of the first mass is larger, than T plus, then this act like uh, as a damping. So the first particle is damped. If it is lower, then it's a forcing to the system. And the same thing happened for the other one, okay? So basically you do this, you start running sim numerical simulation with zero, except for the move in the first and the last mass, and you reach some stationary conditions, okay? You reach some stationary condition. And let's just uh, tell you what we did differently from, differently from other people to, uh, in order to, to, to analyze the data. So what we did, we did more or less what, uh, you know, in fluid mechanics uh, people do. If you want to go from, uh, let's say, microscopic from uh, dynamics of molecules to macroscopic uh, dynamics, you, you define uh, a volume which contains a large number of, uh, of particles, okay, of masses. Uh, which should be uh, smaller with respect to the size of the system. So we define a scale lambda, okay? L total L is the, is the um, L is the, is the distance between two thermostats and lambda is the, the small scale uh, that, uh, that is here, which contain large number of particles. And we measure locally in the properties of the system. So we measure also Fourier transform. We take Fourier transform of this in order to see also spectral properties of our system, okay? Uh, of course, you have to assume that uh, this is sufficiently small in order that uh, it's, this, the system is quasi-homogeneous over, over a box uh, of size lambda. Okay, so uh, again, you run simulations, and this is uh, what uh, uh, 
this is, and this is what we, we get. So uh, this is a, 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 um, the spectra. Okay, so there are three lines. Let's concentrate on the blue one. Okay, the blue one is the energy, spectral energy density, spectral energy density as a function of wave number. Okay, and the blue line uh, is taken very close to the cold thermostat. Okay, so the blue line is, clo is close to the uh, cold thermostat, while the red line is to the hot thermostat. What we observe here is that you see that at high frequency numbers, here and here, both for the uh, close to the to both to the to the both uh, thermostats, we observe uh, quasi equipartition of energy. Okay, so this this things is almost flat, so it means that uh, it reaches some uh, almost equipartition state. However, at two different temperature. However, if you look things in the middle, so for low wave numbers. Uh, it looks like the temperature are more or less the same, so and which is an average in between the two the two thermostats. Okay, so this is even more clear if we take the symmetric part of the energy. We take the symmetric part of the energy. So um, so we take energy plus the energy minus k divided, and and this is contribute to the total energy of the system. Again, we see that we have this is done for different number of particles. So this is n two to eleven, and this is two to 15, so this is increasing the number of particles in the system. And what you observe here is that, again, for high wave numbers, you have equipartition, okay, at two different temperatures, which are actually the temperature of the thermostats. However, for uh, low wave numbers, the temperature is more or less, an, it's an average between the two thermostats. Well, this is not exactly the temperature, but this is energy, but it's the average energy uh, between the two thermostats. This is the first thing to notice, but there is another interesting thing that should be noticed here, is that uh, you see there is a transition region here from this uh, wave numbers to the low wave numbers, and there is a transition region, and this transition region moves towards lower wave number as you increase the number of uh, particles of the system, okay? so. Actually, this is an important thing because what the, the, the uh, anomalous conductivity is actually uh, comes by, uh, on, uh, it's, I mean, as, as we will see how this uh, critical wave number, I would say, or critical region sh changes as you increase the number of particles of the system. You can look also at the uh, temperature profile, well, energy profiles in the system, okay? so. Uh, this is for uh, blue is n to the 13 particles and red is n to uh, 2 to the 9, okay, particles of the system. We see that if you increase the number of particles, uh, the uh, profile gets closer to the Fourier expected low. So the dashed line is what we expect from Fourier low. Uh, but however, if we do this filtering, okay, as let's suppose that we do this filtering, we compute profile. We compute profiles, uh, just taking, for example, cutting here, making a filter in Fourier space and just considering these things that are thermalized and then the, this part, which is basically ballistic and we compute the profiles, then we get a, a very good agreement with the uh, Fourier profile with the high, for high wave numbers. And for the ballistic thing, you get something which is flat also, okay? So basically the, the idea of the, of the anomalous conduction comes from the fact that there are some modes that uh, at low wave numbers travel faster, okay? They don't have time to interact with the other modes, okay? And they travel from one side to the other, just keeping their temperature or their energy. And then the final energy that they get is just in average between the two thermostats, okay? So this is the picture that comes out from deterministic simulations. Okay, if you compute now the conductivity uh, as a function of uh, um, n, so the total number of part, the number of particles, there is a behavior which is like that. The conductivity is computed in this way, we have, in which you have uh, uh, the average uh, current, variation of temperature divided by uh, n, and you get something that scales like n 
to the 2.5. And this is in agreement with many other uh, numerical work that had been done in, in the past by uh, other researchers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we, we did, uh, you know, we can compute it either. We did ensemble averaging. So you made different numerical computation. You reach a stationary state and then you measure current in each uh, ensemble and then you average over it. Okay. This is all numerical. So uh, you, we, we can run many different numerical simulations with different, slightly different initial condition and you can average over that. Or you can reach, well, Numerically, you could do also, uh, and things don't change actually, we have uh, verified that. You can make very long simulation and just, uh, you know, average over time, and you get more or less uh, similar results, okay? That's not a local average over the Yeah, it's, it's a flux average over, over, yeah. Do you know how it fluctuates? Well, no, we didn't compute. That's an interesting question. Yes, we did not compute fluctuation around constant uh, current. Yes, that's, that's interesting. We didn't do that. Okay, so this is, I mean, I think so far uh, the things that I have said are, uh, I mean, the, the, apart from this uh, way of looking things in the sense that we look at how we low, slow, um, low wind numbers and high wind numbers behave differently. I mean, those results have been already, uh, you know, uh, understood in the literature. And, uh, and uh, what we are doing here, uh, it's, uh, it's try to, 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 to verify these results from a, I would say, a mesoscopic point of view. Again, there are some papers on this, and I will go back on this. There are some theoretical papers on that and I will uh, mention uh, on the weight kinetic approach. Uh, but what we do, we, uh, we do numerical computation in order to, 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 to see if we learn something more from uh, uh, our approach. So the idea is to introduce normal variables, normal modes, which are a combination of, this is quite standard in the wave turbulence community, um, as a combination of, uh, those are amplitudes of uh, position and amplitude of uh, momentum in, in, uh, yeah, in Fourier space. Uh, and, and you compute variable AK, it's a normal variable. The interesting thing is that if you have this variable AK, um, when waves travel to the right, positive X, then you have, uh, for, for wave numbers greater than zero, waves travel to the positive X, and for K less than zero, wave travel to negative X, okay? Take FPU system, write it in terms of K, A of K, you end up with this equation, okay? So this is the equation that you get. Uh, we have removed, uh, you have to remove some non resonant terms that come out. There are four wave interactions, which are of the kind uh, one into three or zero to four. So there are other interactions that counts, but you can remove them uh, assuming small beta uh, using some transformation. You just can show that those are the only terms that uh, are relevant in the system, okay? Uh, okay, so this is standard uh, equation in the wave turbulence community. And then what you can do, you can, uh, you know, you can derive the wave kinetic equation. I'm just catching, I mean, what can be done. It's, uh, uh, I just let me say that this um, physicists have done this derivation uh, for, for a long time, uh, over 50 years, uh, but now mathematicians are, are working on this. Uh, there is a rigorous derivation for the weight kinetic equation here for the NLS equation, uh, but uh, only for NLS equation. So there is a, a rigorous result by Deng and Zaher. Uh, it's on the archive in 2021. In any case, the idea is to, is to move from normal variables, say K, to angle action variables, okay? Then we can expand the action and the angles. And uh, uh, okay, and then, you know, you do, this expansion, you look at order by order what is happening and you take averages over initial random phases and amplitudes. Take the large box limit, so you take L going to infinite. You can define a, a wave action spectral density function, just uh, averaging over the wave action, okay? And uh, theta bar I and I bar are initial conditions, okay? And if you do that, you can write down an evolution equation for the wave action spectral density function, which is this one. So it's look very much like a Boltzmann equation. Uh, here you have a beta square term. So this is the collision integral. It's a triple integral. Actually, you have two delta functions here. One is over wave number and the other is over um, uh, frequency, okay? 
uh, and this T one two three four is just uh, a, a matrix that weight the interactions. Just uh, one thing should be noted that usually the, the weight kinetic equation is written from minus infinite to plus infinite, but in this case is from zero to pi because we are a discrete system and this is periodic uh, in, in Fourier space. Then we have, uh, uh, okay, conserved quantities. Okay, so there is energy that is a quantity that is conserved. So it's omega k, the integral of omega k and k dk. And number of particles is also uh, conserved. I think this has been probably done in a paper by Spohn in a rigorous way. Usually in wave turbulence, we have also conservation of, we, uh, of momentum, which is associated to this delta function here. Okay, usually, but in this case, since our system is discrete, what happened is that uh, the system has uh, unclap resonances. Okay, so this delta function should be intended mod uh, to pi, and this means that uh, uh, wave, uh, uh, momentum is not conserved because of the presence of unclapped resonances. Uh, this is quite standard in wave turbulence. You can find in the book either of Sergei Nazarenko or Stakhado uh, Vlbov uh, and um, Falkovich. You can define an entropy, okay? And uh, this is the definition of the entropy that you get. Uh, and the S over dt is greater or equal to zero, and you get uh, that the S over dt is equal to zero, and then N of k, this is the stationary solution, which is the Rayleigh-Jeans distribution, okay? Uh, if you just integrate here in dk, you take this on the other side, you integrate, you get a nice uh, thermodynamic uh, relation, which relate temperature, energy, number of particles or number of waves and uh, chemical potential here. Uh, one comment here, because I will, I will show you at the end of my talk some uh, simulation on that. Uh, here you see that NK is defined as a, is a positive defined quantity, okay? It's positive defined. Also energy is positive defined, number of particles, okay? But you can have NK positive uh, in two different ways. You can have temperature, positive temperature, okay? And then you have that the denominator must be positive. But you could also have the situation in which the temperature is negative, okay? If the temperature is negative, this means only that omega k in minus mu must be uh, also negative. So you have to select the chemical potential in such a way that uh, the denominator is negative. So uh, actually with this, within this description, uh, you can allow also the system for, to have uh, negative temperature states, okay? And I think this will be the topic of uh, a talk by, by Davide this afternoon, Davide Proman. But this is interesting, this is important, what I'm going to say, and this is the plot of the Rayleigh-Jeans distribution. So uh, you see, this is the Rayleigh-Jeans distribution for different parameters, just to check. So uh, you see that uh, temperature, uh, if mu is zero, if the chemical potential is zero, then you have constant temperature. This is a quick partition of energy. Um, yeah. Uh, on the other side, if you have a potential, for example, that is uh, a temperature that is negative, then the distribution of energy is at high wave numbers, okay? So for negative temperature, I mean, there is nothing special about these negative temperature states, but what is, the main difference is that the energy is concentrated at around uh, high wave numbers, okay? And so this will, I anticipate you that, I mean, we, we run some simulation with negative temperature thermostat, and I anticipate you that because of the absence of uh, long waves in the system, okay, because if we put two thermostats which are characterized by uh, this distribution, then uh, long waves are almost absent in the system, so the, the properties of uh, the anomalous conduction uh, will change in the system. Okay, so uh, some results, okay, just to mention some results on anomalous conduction using the weight kinetic equation. Uh, there is a nice work by Perversev, uh, then uh, Lukarin and Enspon, uh, and then Mele, Merino, Aceituno. The interesting things about these two papers is that they have exactly the same titles, the same title, you see? <laughs> they have the same title, but uh, apart from capital uh, letters. So <laughs> if you check in their paper, <laughs> and, and this, the, actually these papers cite this other one. So I don't know how they manage to, to they cite <laughs> the paper by Mele, and Merino, Aceituno, they cite Lucarini and Spohn, but they, they, they keep the same title as uh, Lucarini and Spohn. So I don't, uh, okay. Uh, by, by the way, they're different. I mean, they, they end up with the, the, uh, 
they're consistent, but they do, I mean, in, in, uh, in Melet and Merino Aceituno, they derive a uh, macroscopic equation uh, from a uh, wave kinetic equation, and they, they get some fractional uh, uh, diffusion equation. And, and Lucadina and Spon, uh, they, they, they look for uh, the anomalous conduction acts actually uh, in, some, uh, in some limit of small uh, perturbation to equilibrium to redistribution of energy. Okay. So, so we did run numerical computation of the kinetic equation. So the problem of running numerical computation of uh, the kinetic equation is to solve uh, uh, the collision integral. So the, the most difficult part is to solve the collision A integral. But in order to do that, you just uh, uh, exploit the properties of the Dirac delta function. So you, you rewrite it, you have two delta function here. So actually this can be reduced to a single integral. This is triple integral, but with two delta function can be reduced to a single integral. And uh, so we have to look for the resonant manifold. Uh, in order to do this calculation. And uh, this has been done by Lucadina and Spohn again in a paper in 2008. So actually there are trivial resonances for which K1 is equal to K2 and K3, equal, all the way numbers are the same or are in pair, K1 is equal to K3 and K2 is equal to K4, which means actually that the waves are not interacting. Or there is the non-trivial resonant manifold, which is in the, uh, here, in which if you give two-way numbers k1 and k3 you get the way number k2 and you get also a number k4 okay so this uh this is in, i mean important for us because we could use directly this uh, equation to 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 reduce our uh, triple integral into a single integral so at the end of the story we have to solve only this numerically only this integral where f of k is just this function here this comes all from uh, lucarina and spon paper okay just to i mean i don't i okay i don't i should stop at 10 o'clock right uh, 11 o'clock uh, early 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 okay yeah yeah just okay just to you know without just checking that things work so the first thing that we did is just to you know take uh, any initial condition without you know considering it nothing special just take an initial condition uh, characterized by some spectral distribution at time t equals zero and look if this relaxes numerically to the Rayleigh genes distribution predicted uh, analytically okay and uh, we can do we, we I can show you two examples uh, we use actually at the beginning we were using four order runge kutta method but it doesn't give real improvement so we can use directly the explicit uh, uh, method uh, Euler method and uh, Okay, this is what is happening. So let's suppose that we have E of K, this is distribution of energy at time t equals zero, and this is the initial distribution. Then we solving the kinetic equation. This is the Rayleigh genes distribution, which is expected for such temperature and chemical potential. And you see at the end that, I mean, it's to the two lines are superimposed. So after some time, T hundred, T equal to 100, you get the, the, the correct Rayleigh genes distribution. Entropy grows, okay, during the simulation, uh, and then it becomes flat as, as we supposed to be. Energy is amazingly conserved by numerical scheme, so it's to, to numerical, uh, to, to machine precision. Conservation of number of particles is a little bit less, but still we get good conservation, especially if you increase the number of modes, the Fourier modes, you get a, a, a good com, uh, conservation of uh, of uh, number of particles in the system. Okay, this is a second example, which is uh, also relevant. So let's suppose that we start with this uh, symmetric initial condition. What is happening is that you start building, uh, uh, the, the evolution goes through, and you start building this two, you know, this solution, the out of equilibrium solution with these two peaks here. And it takes huge amount of time for those peaks to relax to the Rayleigh genes distribution. And the reason for that, is, is can be found in the paper by, by uh, Perverzev, okay, and then also by Spohn and Lukarinen, is that if you rewrite the kinetic equation in this way, okay, it's just a, another way of writing the kinetic equation. Here you have uh, uh, there, this tau kappa k can be considered as a relaxation time, okay? So it's the time needed for the system to reach a, a equilibrium. And it can be shown that, I mean, this has been done for um, equipartition of energy, assuming very small deviation from local equilibrium, you get that tau k diverges uh, like k to the minus five third for k much, much less than one. So this basically means that the low weight numbers do not interact, okay? So 
in, in the FPU system, and that's the origin of the anomaly, is that those, the, the low weight numbers, which are here and here, okay, because this is zero to pi, uh, do not interact. And of course, ballistic waves can travel in this region without much uh, trouble, travel, um, yeah, tra yeah, transferring energy from one thermostat to the other. Okay, so now what happened if we do um, numerical computations uh, uh, in the presence of non-homogeneities? Okay, so we have the transport uh, wave kinetic equation. So we have, uh, so we're working now on the two thermostats. We have this um, uh, term, which is the advection. Uh, VK is the group velocity, okay? Uh, and, and as I mentioned, the group velocity is larger for low wave numbers. So these terms will become, it's large, for low wave numbers, why the collision integral is very weak for low wave numbers, okay? And we did simulation of that, okay? So I'm running to the... For the thermostat, we used to rate the, the Rayleigh genes distribution for the two thermostats. So we take two thermostats with one temperature 0, 04, the other temperature 0, 02, and this is the chemical potential. And then we work in a box 0L, okay? Uh, and then we set as an initial condition that uh, an a temperature which is in between the two thermostats and uh, the same chemical potential. We want to keep the same chemical potential uh, of the two thermostats uh, in order to avoid flux of, uh, uh, of wave action across the, our domain. So we have only flux of energy. And this is the, the result, okay? So this is the result that we get. So we define something which is the spectral temperature these are two cases, L equal one, so two thermostats close to each other, and then L equal 10, a little bit far away. So this spectral energy, spectral temperature is defined directly from, I mean, from the definition of uh, the temperature, the Rayleigh genes distribution. Of course, if the system is in equilibrium, then this T is a constant, okay? Uh, indeed for, uh, you see here, this is, okay, these plots are, X over LL, and this is wave number. So it's kind of not easy to read, but those are the two thermostats. Okay, one thermostat here, and the other, the cold thermostat on the other side. Uh, so the first line corresponds to L equal to one, and the second one, L equal to 10. What you observe here is that uh, as your time is switched on, you have a front, a warm, a hot front from the hot thermostat, moving towards the, um, the colder thermostat. And the, other, the, the same thing happens for the cold thermostat. So there is this front coming uh, from, the, from your right to the left, so from the cold thermostat to the right. And basically, the, the, the two thermostats are very close to each other, so there is no time for the nonlinear interaction to, to take place. So they do not interact, and the dynamics is purely ballistic. So this thing basically moves with the group velocity, just like, uh, just like with the advection, because it's like solving uh, the kinetic equation in a, in a time scale in which this C does not play any role, okay? In which this C does not play any role. And this is the final result that you get. If you put a little bit far away the, 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 um, the two thermostat, well, again, you see that for low weight numbers, there are this, uh, waves that are traveling but however in the bulk of the system then there is some uh, space in which you you get uh, nonlinear interactions become uh, uh, important and you have more or less a regular diffusion so in this central part you have more or less a regular diffusion while you have this you have this two channel which in which again the the advection term is dominant with with respect to the collision term and uh, and and then this is what you get. So this kind of picture you get it for any L, of course, as L gets larger, then uh, this channel is always uh, restricted to lower, lower weight numbers, and there is a larger region in which um, nonlinear interaction take, take place here. So you can, uh, okay, you can look at the energy current. Uh, so we measure the current from numerical computation in this way, and we take average over X, so this is an integral made over X, so this, this bracket means integral over X, and we plot the, uh, this current as a function of wave number, okay, for the different L. So we have L equal to one, L equal to 250, and uh, what is clear from here is that 
Uh, this is a zoom in this, uh, instead you have a, a zoom of this lower frequency part. You see that the flux is in almost for low K is almost independent on uh, wave number for low wave numbers, okay? So this basically means that uh, the, the system behaves ballistically, okay? If you remember, okay, again here, if J is independent uh, of wave number, then uh, kappa, now I switch, sorry, I changed just the, the notation for this is conductivity, scales like L. However, in the high frequency part, the high frequency, high wave number part, what is happening is that if you now multiply Jx by L, so this is Jx by L, uh, then all the high frequency part just collapse, okay, collapse here. So this basically means that uh, this high wave number part is again ruled by uh, standard diffusion, because if this is J times L, and this is all independent on, uh, on, the, on the size of the system, okay? Okay, you can do also um, profile, energy profile, and you get, this is just for L equal to one, and uh, for, with numerical computation, we, we get, I mean, for L equal to one, uh, the, the conduction is anomalous, of course, so we get this strong gradient uh, in our numerical simulation at later times, okay? Uh, the same thing is when you get L equal to 10, but it's a little bit, uh, I mean, the, um, the profile gets closer to, to Fourier, okay? Okay, and this is the, the energy conductivity that we compute from our numerical simulation. So in our numerical simulation, we compute the conductivity kappa uh, as a function of time, okay? And those are the lines for the different distance from the uh, thermostat. So you have, okay, you see that the, then the, the, from the simulation we get a constant value of uh, conductivity, and this is, uh, I mean, our, our conductivity of the system, uh, and the conductivity increases with L, okay? So you see at its stationary state, the conductivity increases with L. Uh, and if we plot kappa as a function of L, then you get these two lines. The first line are ballistic, so it, when the size of the system is very small, then you have only ballistic uh, uh, contribution, but then when you are in uh, the distance become large, then you have a mix in between ballistic and, uh, and Fourier regime. And the scaling that we get here, uh, this line is L to the 0 0.4, okay? So, which is consistent with the deterministic simulation and most of the literature in, uh, in the system, in the, uh, most of the literature, yeah. Uh, okay, if you scale uh, uh, the conductivity with, with uh, L to the 0 0.4, you see that all these wave numbers collapse here, and here you have the ballistic mode that do not collapse, but if you scale it with L to the 0 0.4, they all collapse here. Okay, another experiment that we did, numerical experiment that we did is uh, with kinetic equation, is the evolution of a bell-shaped temperature perturbation, so let's, or energy perturbation. So let's suppose that we have um, a, a domain in which the energy is constant, and uh, it's uh, uh, in its equilibrium. And then let's suppose that we change slightly at some point, we, we perturb the, this energy with a bump, okay? And you see here the perturbation of the energy is this bump here uh, as a function of X. What is happening here is that uh, as for the hard point gas, uh, we don't have only that the peak is diffusing here, but we have the formation of two uh, extra waves, okay? Two extra waves that are running out that they move with the um, basically with the group velocity okay and they escape from the system and if we plot sigma square as a function of time sigma square as a function of time uh, which is this is a measure of the width actually of the of the of our uh, solution you get that um, once this is the time at which the, the these waves get out of the of the domain and after that this is line correspond to uh, T okay so this is proportional to T okay which means that uh, uh, the 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 core this part of the diffusion diffused I mean after the, these two waves have escaped the domain uh, the, the behavior is this uh, peak is, is basically uh, a la Fourier so it's just diffusing a la Fourier 
Okay, this is, again, we have negative temperature states, okay, just to, to mention, but Davide will speak about this in another context, but we can do numerical, we can, you know, have a thermostat with negative temperature and the other thermostat with another negative temperature, and we can, um, we can play the same, the same game and we can compute, okay, we get energy profile. So there is nothing particularly special in this because energy flows in the good direction, so you have a flux from more negative temperature to more positive end temperature. But the thing is that this is a quite new result in which if you compute um, the, the uh, oh, this is, I'm missing, an, yeah. If you compute a, 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 the conductivity as a function of the distance uh, between the thermostat, you get something that is different from 0 0.4. So I, I, I have the impression that if you get something that is very narrow in free space around uh, k equal to pi, then you will get, again, normal conduction because you will not have any more those ballistic modes at high wind numbers. So actually, this uh, conductivity uh, exponent that you get may, may depend on the equilibrium that you choose, okay? So, I'm done. So those are the conclusions. So, well, we have conducted, uh, we, we have used, uh, you know, deterministic uh, simulations and uh, weight kinetic simulation in order to, to understand the anomalous conduction problem. Uh, the weight kinetic equation displays anomalous conduction which are in agreement with deterministic simulation. So this is deterministic, I'm missing something, simulations. And uh, our findings support the theoretical results obtained by Pedeverzev and Lukarin and Spohn. Uh, I didn't mention that, but of course, what is happening at low weight numbers, what is happening is that you have a, actually, the kinetic equation does not preserve momentum. However, because the integral is so small, actually this way propagate as they would conserve momentum. And so this is an important uh, um, thing that uh, for, for if you're on conservation of momentum, you get this behavior of uh, uh, extra sound waves that are escaping from the main peak. And, uh, and then uh, it's interesting to, to study wave kinetic equations. It's to be an interesting tool for studying negative temperature states. And this will be the talk by David Perman this afternoon. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, questions? Benjamin. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you, yes, maybe it's a naive question, but so I can think of this system as a one-dimensional system where I can apply hydrodynamics, hydrodynamic equation on that, and then use hydrodynamics to solve the problem of the temperature. And in 1D, hydrodynamics is anomalous, and there's this kind of uh, super diffusion and all that. So would that work? And if not, why? To, to use hydrodynamics, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess you you are the expert, right? So you, you <laughs> so you so you, I should know. You should know the answer more than me. I guess some people or uh, Herbert Spohn has have, maybe you you have done it in the. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Yeah. But yes, I guess yes. But I don't know about uh, this hydrodynamics that you 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 are talking about. Uh, I don't know how to take if it is able to take into account. Uh, the, 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 the equilibrium that you choose, right? How do you take into account the equilibrium that you choose? That's the, because if you, if you take some initial condition which are in equilibrium, but for high weight numbers, I don't know if that is possible to, to do it in the hydrodynamics. So, mm -hmm. The question is that if you would sell yeah. in, some, in some kind of equilibrium, and you have to determine what is your possible, what are your equilibria that are possible, yeah. maybe at normal, at high, at low K, there's something you can do. But you, so, you, you have an answer. Sure. Let me just try to answer your question. I mean, so hydrodynamics, if you take the Euler scale, then, uh, you know, it's a usual sort of three mode hydrodynamics, right? Three conserved fields. I mean, that, that's sort of at least, uh, you know, what you see numerically. Now, of course, here we are working in the scheme where you want to just look at the transport, right? And so then uh, you, naively you would, would write sort of some Navier Stokes. That, of course, doesn't work. And so what people have tried is that you take a fractional Laplacian instead of the ordinary Laplacian, sort of more like the phenomenological type of ansatz, but that seems to reproduce, uh, it seems to be sort of working, I mean, you know, sort of, uh, right? I mean, so. Your theory of non-linear Ah. 
Well, I mean, but um, if I take, uh, uh, no, no, if I take nonlinear fluctuation theory, I mean, then basically what you, I mean, we never really applied nonlinear fluctuations to, to, to this transport problem, right? But when you look at correlation functions, then you can see the anomalous spreading and you can yeah. see of whatever slow decay of, of energy, energy carbon correlation, things like that. I mean, so, but I have a question, actually. I mean, the question was, uh, you know, there's of this general belief that, uh, of course, I mean, you know, once you do numerical study, then uh, you have to focus on various, one very specific system. Now you took here sort of the anharmonicity, which goes like, like the force power be which sort of, uh, you know, time honored and, and very good, but there's sort of this general idea that, that maybe it doesn't really depend exactly how you put the nonlinearity, except that, you know, you should not make the system uh, integrable, right? I mean, so if you take a non-integrable system, then sort of the idea is that, you know, it doesn't make any, you know, all, all systems sort of look alike. And uh, I just would like to have your comment, I mean, whether yeah. you think that's reasonable or sort of just simply sort of over-optimistic. Um, okay. So, uh, well, first of all, a comment of uh, integrability. Okay, let's let's make a comment on that. Okay, uh, if you if you think about, uh, for example, the total lattice, okay, and you want to do the same kind of exercise we're doing, and you want to write a kinetic equation, then uh, you you suppose that you you expand for a small, uh, uh, you know, you can expand the exponential of the total lattice. You have three wave interaction, four wave interaction, and so on. You start removing, and you get a four wave interaction because three wave interactions are forbidden. And you have a four wave interaction system, which is exactly the same as I have written here. However, something happens is that uh, the, the coupling, I, I verify that with Mathematica. So the coupling coefficient on the resonant manifold associated to the total lattice is identically zero. Okay, so the kinetic equation approach fails completely for uh, integrable systems. Okay, so, and this is uh, true for any integrable system. I, well, I'm, I don't have it, uh, maybe I'm exaggerating. What I know is that for KDV, NLS, you, either you don't have resonances or the coupling coefficient is zero on the resonant manifold. Okay, so uh, that's the first thing about nonlinearity. Uh, about about uh, um, uh, generalizing this to other systems, of course, you can you can take, uh, for example, nonlinear Klein Gordon system and you can do the same uh, thing. Uh, you can take a discrete nonlinear Schrodinger equation and, uh, okay. Yeah, discrete nonlinear Schrodinger, is, discrete nonlinear Schrodinger equation is, is uh, unless you take Ablovitz Ladic model, it's a, it's a non integrable model. Um, then what there are, what will happen is that it's not, one should compute the, the coupling coefficient, the matrix T, first of all, to see if uh, the, the collision integral is very weak at some uh, wave number, okay? But because that's, I think, it's a peculiarity of the FPUT problem to have this um, behavior at low wave numbers. And uh, I'm not sure that if you get, if you do that, for example, with discrete NLS, you get the same answer. Maybe you have other problems, okay? It's clear if you put very close the two thermostat, any system would give a ballistic uh, contribution because you don't have time for the system to interact. But um, in, in any case, that's interesting. Maybe with sign Gord with um, Clay Gordon, a linear Clay Gordon, uh, I, I could try to do that. I could try to see what happens. Uh, uh, the thing is that you have to look for the resonant manifold and, and then you solve it numerically. But there is no pro in principle, there is no problem in doing that. In principle, there is no problem in doing that, but I'm not sure that is going to be universal for all chains. That's my because it depends very much on the specific properties of the collision integral. Yeah. Um, might be my question is related to this discussion, but I I, I still say it in, in my way. So uh, in in the derivation of this kinetic equation, uh, the assumption of in uh, homogeneity is used, yeah. and this is natural but very strong assumption. So because, and I would think that in this type of equations, uh, independent on integrability, you can have a lot of solitary wave type coherent structures, solid, solitary waves, breezers, and so on. So, and then in homogeneity uh, does not work. So did you check it in full numerics? What, what, what are yeah. sort of- Yes, uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. let me, I just write down the, uh, where is the no, no, okay so uh, yes um, yeah here the, in order to derive this equation of course you have to make assumptions right basically you 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 consider now that 
uh, this, in the wave turbulence theory, this is AK, AK star, AK1, AK star, K2. It's uh, they, they're actually what you take in this big matrix are just the diagonal terms. Here, in order to take the, to to get this, you take an expansion around the diagonal. Okay, so it's you take weakly. It's weak non-homogeneity in the system. It's not the full non-homogeneous problem. Okay. So that's the first comment. The second comment is that uh, all the theory of the wave kinetic equation fails whenever you have solitons. Okay, that's another uh, issue. And the reason is that it's a weakly nonlinear theory. Okay, so you expand for small nonlinearity. And so actually you're throwing away uh, solitons uh, out of the system. It would be interesting and doable, of course, to, to, you know, to, to look at, uh, if you take total lattice, for example, you make two thermostats, and then what you do, you take uh, inverse scattering to look at the content of solitons as a function of the difference of temperature. That would be a very easy uh, exercise uh, I, to I do. I agree completely. I just wanted to, ch to, to ask if you check that, so no, I didn't in your check case, that. because no, 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 you no, no, still no. can get actually very close results even in the presence of some coherent structures. And this is a real puzzle, how, how it works, because you apply kinetic equation, you see coherent structures, but the answer is still no, but, very close. No, yeah, but I, I mean, if you, if you see coherent structures, in principle, kinetic equations should not work because kinetic equation assumes that your phases are, are random, right? So at time t equals zero, you assume they're random and they should be random for all times. And that's the assumption that you make. And if you start correlating things, maybe things will work, but it's more a miracle rather than you know, a, a statement, precise statement. Probably we should stop here now and uh, well we, you can continue and ask questions uh, over the uh, coffee break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome my friend. Thank you very much for your Thank patience you. and sorry no for some of the abruptness. I'm trying to think of two things at the same time.